Actually, there's a time to be tough. But be tough with respect. So perhaps what you can do, sit the young brother down. Don't do it in front of their friends, man. They don't like to be talked in front of their friends. They don't like to be advised in front of their friends. You have to understand that. What I try to do, it's like Norton antivirus, man. You've got to quarantine the problem. When you, I'm being honest. When you quarantine them, then all of the arrogance, all of the cool, all of the, you know, I got it going on, I'm the baddest man on the planet, and so on, falls down. And then you can build a relationship with a brother on a personal level. You start trying to talk him through his problems. Ahi, this is what you're doing. This is what I don't like that you're doing. This is what's not correct what you're doing. Do you recognize that what you're doing is wrong? Maybe he's going to say no. And you have to make it clear. This is why it's wrong. Then after doing something wrong is accepted, how can we walk through this, how can we walk through this process? How can I help you get through this process? Do you want help? I had a brother come to me one time on a message and say, Aki, I'm addicted to drugs. I don't want to quit. I want you to make me quit. I said, brother, if you don't want to quit, I can't make you quit. I mean, I can beat you up or something and like, tie you to a chair. But at the end of the day, as soon as you go out, you're going to go and use drugs again. So there has to be a willingness on the part of the person. So you have to talk to, talk to them alone, Aki. Build a relationship with them and try to get inside the psyche and see what's going on with them. And that takes time, man. Youth work is not... Number one, I believe that youth work, it's a crime that has been put on a volunteer basis. Every masjid should have a youth worker, excluding the imam. And he should be paid about 70, 80 grand, 100 grand a year. But like, with insurance, he can take care of his family. By the way, I'll apply it. But I'm being honest about this. And they should have an advanced degree in dealing with young people. Because the state of affairs in America now is not simple, brother, to deal with young people. There's complicated issues. Muslim youth are torn between two personalities, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. So you have to try to get to know them. There's no real magic recipe. That's what I try to do, sit down, build a relationship over time, get to know the person. They trust you, you trust them, and then you start to help them recognize their faults and walk them through their faults. Law. Any more questions? Are you up? Yeah, I can hear you. Thank you so much for this lecture. The way you talk, the way you talk, and the procedure that you talk is what all of us have a This is my agent. If you want to talk to him, he can be the booty deal going on that hard. I'm looking like four mil up front, you know. And not getting in. Dollars. No problem. No, I mean, first of all, thanks for destroying my nuffs in front of everyone. I appreciate it. My arrogance now is shot through the roof. My wife's going to get upset when I come home. You know, I'll be honest, man. Sometimes I get into my wife. I'm like, you know who I am? I'm in my soul. And she's like, no, 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 you're not. You're the man I married. That's who you are. Because <laughs> all of us make mistakes. But first of all, we are only as good as the community around us. The community is what makes the imam what they are. So I'm just a reflection of the brothers that I know. Primarily, I was in a mass usra for about 10 years. So through, sorry to say this, Muslim American society and through uh, being around a good masjid like this good community here really you have a very nice group of brothers here who I met I've met them in airports all over the country very friendly brothers in fact I'm the one you owe me I'm the one who told Muhammad Faqih to take this position yeah yeah I want my I want my percentage on the deal right I'm Jerry Maguire here but we're only as good as the community. None of us are better than anyone else. We have to get rid of this. And I have a lot of mistakes. Just ask my wife. She can write the most surah. the suhaid web. But no, maybe in the future we'll write something now. You know, we're still young. I'm still very young. I'm in Egypt studying in Azhar. So I have a lot of work ahead of me. A lot of things I have to do. But make dua for us. And we ask Allah to increase us in khair. And to protect us from arrogance.
and lose the sight of the blessing of Allah. Rising huh? yeah, the book Rising Soul. There is a book outside, by the way. I wrote an introduction to the book called Rising Soul. It's, it will help a lot of things that we talked about today. Today, it gives you a very practical understanding of this Tazkiya, improving yourself. If you buy it, I'll sign it for you. If you come, inshallah, my, my chicken scratch is not nice. I'll sign it for you, and tomorrow try to come also to the seminars, inshallah, and benefit. Any more questions? A really comment, we really have a, we'd rather have a question than a comment. Yes, actually. We'll take two more questions, no problem. But that young brother back there had his hand up. Yes, actually. Come sit out to him. That's a good question. He said, can you comment on Toba? How far can you sin until Allah will no longer forgive you? That's impossible. The Prophet Sallallahu mentioned the man who, rep who sinned. Then he repented to Allah. And Allah said, Undur ila abdi, look at my slave. He believes in me and he repented to me. I forgive him. Then he made the same mistake again. Because wa khulaq al insan wa da'ifa. Human beings created weak. So then the man he made the same sin again. Then he repented. Then Allah said, look at my servant who sinned and repented. Bear witness, I forgive him. Then he sinned again. Same sin, repented. Allah said, look at my servant who believes in me and repented to me. The Prophet just kept going. He didn't stop. So as long as someone repents to Allah and tries their best, not because they mean to. If you do it on purpose, it's one thing. But if you're weak, and when you sin, you feel your heart break. I know some people who do wrong, and they cry while they do it. Because they're weak. This person, inshaAllah, Allah will forgive them. And even the one who, who sins on purpose, when he wakes up one day and says, man, I was out there. I can't believe I did that. Allah will forgive him, inshaAllah. Tawbah come from the Arabic word, Taba yatubu. Tawbah tan tawbah is the mashaq. Tawbah means to turn, actually. Tibtu anhu. I turn from this person. Tawbah means to turn from the sin to the Lord of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To turn your back. We say in, in, in English, I'm going to turn my back on you. So we say, I'm going to turn my back on the sin. I saw one young brother had a question. I'm going to take it, then we're going to call it a name. Yes, Akhi. Where did you grow up? Where did I grow up? Yeah, that's a good question, isn't it? Uh, personal questions, you know. 25 cents for the connection. Three dollars each additional minute. <laughs> Actually, I grew up in Oklahoma, Oklahoma. <laughs> and I spent most of my life there, Oklahoma. And uh, alhamdulillah, that's how life goes. Got into some trouble, found a copy of the Quran, read the Quran in the restroom. I was scared that my mother would kill me if she found the Quran in the house. And I became Muslim at the age of 20. Uh, it was either Alpha Phi Alpha or becoming Muslim. No offense to any of you who might have crossed the burning sands, but I became a Muslim instead of joining a fraternity my freshman year in college. So, khalas, alhamdulillah. Assalamu alaikum.